A ball is kicked into the air at an angle of 50 degrees. If the ball is in the air for three seconds, how far does it travel? So that's not a lot of information. Let's read that again and think about how to solve this. A ball is kicked into the air at an angle of 50 degrees. If the ball is in the air for three seconds, how far does it travel? So let's assume the ball starts and ends at the ground. We'll draw the ground, the ball, the initial velocity vector, and the path through the air. We'll place the origin where the ball starts. Let's also draw the initial velocity vector over here with the angle and the two components, the initial x velocity and the initial y velocity. So the ball has some initial velocity, we know how long it's in the air, and we're trying to find how far it travels, which is the range of the projectile motion. We can call that delta x, or since the initial x position is zero, delta x is the same as x final. We don't know the magnitude of the initial velocity, but we'll write down that the angle is 50 degrees, the amount of time in the air is 3 seconds, and the initial x and y positions are 0 meters. We don't know the final x position, that's what we're trying to find, but since we're assuming the ball ends at the ground, the final y position is 0 meters. We don't know the x and y velocities, but we know the x acceleration is 0, and the y acceleration is negative g. So we're not given a lot of information. How can we find the range of the ball, and what equations can we use? Well, the only equation that includes the x position is this one. We know the initial x position, and we know the time, but we need to know the x velocity. So how can we find that? We're given the angle of the initial velocity vector, so if we could find the magnitude or the y component, then we could use some trig to find the x component. We need to know the y component in order to find the magnitude, so let's just find the initial y velocity and use the tangent relationship to find the x velocity. Then we can use that to find the range. So how do we find the initial y velocity? We're given the amount of time the ball is in the air. We learned in the lesson videos that the time in the air is determined by the y motion. It's just like one dimensional projectile motion. So this ball has some initial y velocity, it moves up, and then it falls down. If we know the initial and final y positions and the acceleration, then there's only one initial y velocity that would cause the ball to be in the air for three seconds. If it had a faster or slower initial vertical velocity, it would be in the air for more or less than 3 seconds. There's more than one way to solve this, but if we look at this equation, we know the initial and final y positions, we know the time, and we know the acceleration. So we can solve for the initial y velocity. We plug in the values that we know, and the only unknown is the initial y velocity. If we simplify and rearrange that equation, we get 14.7 meters per second for the initial y velocity. Now, we can use that to find the x velocity. Tan of theta equals the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, so tan of 50 degrees equals the initial y velocity over the initial x velocity. If we rearrange that, we can plug in 14.7 meters per second for the initial y velocity, and we get 12.33 meters per second for the initial x velocity. Now we can take that and plug it into this equation, along with the initial x position and the time, and we get 37 meters for the final x position. Again, that's the same as delta x, because the initial x position is zero. So only using the initial angle and the time in the air, we found the range, which is 37 meters. How can we double check our answer? Based on the given information, we can't really think through whether this value makes sense. But like we mentioned before, we can plug this answer into the equations we used and work backwards to see if we get one of the given values. 
So let's start with the range and see if we get 3 seconds for time. Using this equation, we plug in 37 meters for the final x position. Then, using the angle of 50 degrees and the tangent relationship, then if we plug that into this equation and solve for time, we get 3 seconds, which is the value that we were given, so our final answer should be right. These values worked out well, but if you do this, keep in mind that you're plugging in rounded values, so you might be off a few decimal places. But you should be able to tell that it's close enough, or you can use more decimal places and check it again. So that's an example of a problem where we're not given a lot of information, and we need to find different values using multiple steps.